Welcome all. Good morning. My name is Karen A. And I'm here in Jerusalem with fellows all around the world on our Afro Euro Rico 12 podcast. Rico 12 at Rico12.com is tremendously, tremendously popular. It is a repository of recovery um, resources uh, from live podcasts to recorded shares, experience, strength, and hope across all fellowships, most of us recovered and living happy, joyous, and free, or at least with a solution when we're not, thanks to the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, many of us worked the workbook, 12 Steps in Four Hours, that was devised by our fellow Cameron. But many of us have found recovery through the big book and in other meetings, fellowships, et cetera. We do not have the monopoly of, on God. And we invite you to join us as we pack things into the stream of life. If you would like to contribute a seventh tradition, you could do so at rico12.com forward slash support. And you could pay by PayPal or Venmo. And what else can I share with you? If you would like to share, hit me up. I will put my number in the chat. We want more people sharing in our time zone. If you think of some people who have great experience, strength, and hope, we lately have had people from Debtors Anonymous, um, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, Al-Anon, working in the big book as an Al-Anon, Codependence Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, Marijuana Anonymous, just to name a few. Oh, um, there are some people on this chat who definitely got to share here. <laughs> My fellows that I'm in contact with regularly, you know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, Get on here and take out some insurance against your own recovery. I'm I'm actually really happy. And I got to say that, you know, I personally commit my food and my plan of action to a, a sponsor slash fellow of mine. And um, I just uploaded all of my mother's health insurance paperwork, which is a real drag. And uh, so like you, we tried this past shoulder to so shoulder doing the next right thing. It's simple. It's not easy. Take a bunch of forms and deal with a bunch of bureaucracy. But enough about me. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce to my beautiful fellow in the UK, Cheryl. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit of your recovery history. I'm reminding you that not everyone knows you on the line and wants to get to know you a little bit about your personal life, your story, how it was, your recovery journey. And then, of course, um, your topic that you're going to share. And uh, you'll have about 20 minutes to do that. I'll write down some questions. Everybody in the line, you know, mark your questions down. And after Cheryl is done or after about 20 minutes, you could start popping them in the chat and uh, I will feed those questions to Cheryl and uh, we'll take them live. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, thank you for asking me to be of service today. Um, my name's Cheryl and I'm an addict. Um, yeah, I have been super fearful about this share um, this morning and um, yeah, so this morning I had everything planned out. Um, and then my son had a really restless night. My dog woke me up at like half five wanting to go out. Um, my daughter's dad, um, telephoned and he was unable to take her to school today. So all of a sudden, like everything that I had planned didn't go to plan. Um, and you know, before without a program that would have just sent me over the edge, I would have been like copping a resentment, getting angry, causing chaos, just lashing out with my family, um, you know, because things didn't go the way I planned. But, you know, I've been praying on this share um, today, like last night, today for the last couple of weeks. And I just realized that that God just wants me to be of maximum service to my family today. Um, so that's what I was able to do this morning, you know, take me out of myself, out of my thinking and just be there um, and just do what I need to do as, you know, a mom, a wife, um, just a responsible adult. Um, so, you know, God does for me what what I can't do for myself because, you know, left to my own devices, I would have just been sat there like, yeah, just just not doing the best, the best thing for, for anyone. Um so yeah, a little bit about myself um, and my my journey into the room. So I came into um, Cocaine Anonymous in 2016. Um, prior to that, like for 
I don't know, like to the outside world, like everything kind of seemed okay. You know, like I had the job, I had the, the house, the family, like looking in inwards, um, you know, it was like, oh, everything's fine. But, you know, I had this, this terrifying drug habit and just inside I was just like slowly, slowly breaking. Um, I knew that it wasn't how I wanted to live. Um, I thought that it was the substance that I was using that was the problem. Um, so I tried to to kind of stop um, my my own devices. And, you know, I tried therapy, um, uh, like self-help books, hypnotherapy, um, all these different things that, that when I went through um, the workbook that you mentioned um, with my sponsor, you know, they're all the, the logs. Um, you know, I was just trying to to pin um pin my recovery on on external things. And I just I couldn't really understand why I I didn't um why I couldn't stay stopped. Um coming into to the rooms of recovery, I'm just gonna read a little bit on page 52 of the big book. Um, you know, and it talks about the bedevilments. We were having trouble with our personal relationships, we couldn't control our emotional natures. We were a prey to misery and depression. We couldn't make a living. We had a feeling of uselessness. We were full of fear. We were unhappy. We couldn't seem to be of real help to other people. You know, and that that was me. I just I just didn't understand what was was going on. Um, so I heard about the the fellowship, and I went along to to my first meeting. Um, and you know, someone was there doing the share. It was just a really small meeting. And, you know, I heard them them talk about this illness um, that, that I suffer from. And, yeah, that, um, you know, they were spl- explaining about the, the disease of, of alcoholism, um, you know, the, the spiritual malady and the physical allergy brought on by this mental obsession. Um, and, yeah, I just remember feeling like just complete peace at that meeting. It was just like, my gosh, these people they speak like me, they think like me. Um, And, you know, I just, I really got stuck in. Um, After like my first meeting, they had um, like a conscience meeting and I got a service position straight away. Um, Now at this time, there were no women at the meeting. So my number was passed to another woman and they said, oh, you know, she'll call you tomorrow. Um, And you know what she did? And like for the first time, I was like, wow, like someone's actually doing something that they said they were going to do because, you know, I just, I was so fickle. I just had no accountability. Like if I was going to get something from it, like then I'd show up. But, you know, if there was nothing in it for me, um, you know, I just, I was so unreliable. I just didn't really care. So for someone just to kind of take that time to, to call me and just talk to me and kind of, share a little bit of hope like I don't know that just that really just changed like my thinking I was like there could be something in this um and then yeah that was kind of my part like my path like I she put me in touch with my sponsor and when I met her like she was so happy and when she was telling me her story you know and I related to it and then she was just like lit up um and so I just yeah, I did what I was told. She took me through the steps. Um, you know, we went through through the big book. Um, and yeah, I remember I I think I completed the steps within 60 days. And yeah, that was like for my ego. I was, you know, like, oh, I'm the best sponsee. Um, you know, I've completed the steps. And yeah, I kind of just missed the whole point. Like I thought I I did the steps and now like I was gonna be okay. Um, what I kind of failed to realize at that time was when I came into the rooms, um, I ended a very car crash marriage after the nine months. Um, and then I just, you know, I put one substance down and just kind of started picking up other things to make me feel better. And, you know, that was, that was for me at that time, men, um, and I just didn't even realize, and it's only, going back through the work and kind of talking this stuff out now all these years later that you know I was like well I'm not drinking so I'm fine but I'm like I was completely oblivious that I was fixating fixing myself on on men um 
and you know it was just it was still not enough for me like I was still kind of broken inside there was still no um you know I thought I had that connection with a higher power and I thought that I had God and I did as far as like my drinking and using was concerned but it was kind of like I had this recovery life and then like my life like I the two just kind of ran parallel to each other and I just couldn't seem to to merge them um I couldn't just get a grip on that and you know the same way that the the drugs and the alcohol brought me to my knees I was broken again through because these men weren't fulfilling me they weren't giving me what I needed they they I just had these expectations um and so yeah my my thinking was like okay I'm gonna be okay I will just go on a man ban like that's gonna be fine you know not thinking that I'm gonna um you know, like, let's start helping other women, like carrying the message. Um, instead, I I just, um, yeah, it was still all about me. Um, you know, thankfully, I, uh, you know, I, I really relied on my sponsor a lot. I kind of, I would go to her with everything, like, I can't do this, I can't do that. And um, yeah, she, she suggested, you know, as like, you need to start working with other women. So, you know, for a good couple of years like life life took off you know everything was okay I felt okay um and then yeah I got into a relationship with someone that was also in recovery and you know we had a child in 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 recovery um you know we were able we we traveled the world um prior to to having my son to having our son you know and we would go to to meetings um you know we've been to America and um, we went to like a CA convention in Marbella, like, you know, and we just, wherever you go, like you can find, I mean, this was like pre-COVID. So, you know, it was like actual face-to-face p- meetings. Um, and, you know, wherever you go, like you are, you're just welcomed into the rooms. Um, and it was just a really beautiful place to be. Um, but soon, I don't know, like I just kind of, because everything was so good, I guess I kind of just started to, you know, maybe just, oh, like miss a meeting here um, or, oh, like can't do this there. Just started to slowly put the work down. Um, and then at that point, I just started like just really acting out. I was like full of um, full of fear, full of, of jealousy. I was convinced that my my partner was cheating on me. And I just started really acting out dishonestly Um, the same way that, you know, when I was in active addiction, um, you know, it's hard work, like lying to cover up a lie, like that kind of behavior started um, coming out in like, and I hadn't even taken a a drink um, or, you know, and, and my thinking was like, but this is okay. Like, I would just be like, oh, it's just my defect of character. Like, I would just blame it on that. Like, this is this is acceptable behavior, you know, like, and looking back, like it, my thinking was so, so distorted. Like it talks about in the big book, like I could not see the truth from, from the false. Um, I like justified everything that I was doing. Um, and, and yeah, I just carried on like that. I was like, but I'm not taking a drink. Like I'm working a 12 step program. Everything's fine. And, you know, I just, I could not get out of that hole. Like, again, I was like stuck in, stuck in myself. And this time I just didn't do anything about it. Like I was completely disconnected from God. And this was a, you know, four years sober. Um, you know, I thought actually it's probably going to be, um, I need to change my sponsor because, you know, that's what the issue is. Um, so then I ended up without a sponsor um, then COVID hit. So that was just perfect, perfect excuse for me to obviously not go on meetings, uh, not go to my home group meeting. Um, and, you know, like the whole world was cropping up with like all of these solutions, um, you know, the Zoom, Zoom meetings and things. And I just, um, you know, I just turned my back on it completely. Um, and then, you know, like a year later, um, I, I picked up a drink again. And then, like after that, I picked up a drug. And then, you know, at first, like my head told me it was okay. Like I could control this now. Like I knew what I was doing. Um, but of course, 
like this is a progressive illness and it gets worse and never better. And, and that's what it was, was like for me. Um, you know, I kind of, I tried a few times to, to get back into the rooms, but I could just, I could never stay. Everything changed. Uh, sorry, I thought I am muted to myself then. Um, yeah, everything changed uh, in July 2023. Um, again, after another, just another, like I was just literally at my rock bottom at that point. And, you know, thank God there were so many online meetings that I could get to. And I just, you know, I went on, I spent like a whole weekend just on various Zoom meetings. Um, and someone suggested that I get on the, um, the noodle with Nikki meeting on um the Monday and I remember just getting on that meeting and I think there was like 180 people or something on there and I just remember like sat like oh my gosh I had my camera off and it was just so overwhelming but again everyone was just speaking the solution you know speaking about the the big book um and you know I unfortunately I've been to quite a few meetings that it was just very like it, this stuff gets watered down um you know people aren't always living in the solution um and it was just it was incredible and you know uh, a lady on that meeting put her number in the chat about sponsorship so I just you know I got in contact with her um and you know it's crazy like I just the way like how amazing technology is you know she was in um in Israel I'm in England but you know we were just able to to connect um and she said you know you need to print the workbook and we'll go through it so so that's what we did and you know the big book workbook it's just everything is is condensed everything is very clear and there is no room for um you know it's very direct questions um you know, there's no kind of room for waffling. It's like, yes or no. Like, am I going to do this? Am I willing? Um, and you know what? It was just, it was incredible. Um, you know, the I got connected to to a higher power so quickly. Um, you know, God works for me. He does things that I can't do for myself. Now, when I came into the rooms of, of recovery, my husband was still in the active addiction. And I remember that first weekend he was drinking and, you know, before I would have just like fixed on my sponsor, like phoned them up, be like, oh, I don't know what to do. But, um, you know, I was unable to do that with my my sponsor's religion that that take, she's unable to have her phone. So, you know, this is a miracle because I had to rely on another, like my higher power because, you know, people aren't going to fix me. My sponsor is just another human being. Um, so I just, yeah, I had to really pray you know, just please keep me safe. Please keep me safe this weekend. And, you know, I, I was able to, to not pick up that, that drink, even though it was just right in front of me. Um, so yeah, going the, the, the blessing for me about being taken through the, the workbook was, you know, it is direct, um, like direct instructions as is the big book. And when we, so my first amends process, when I first came into the rooms was, just a car crash I was still running on self-will um I was approaching I, I caused more harm than I did good um but I just I didn't I didn't know that at the time um and this time around uh there was like one amends I had to make to my to my best friend um and you know it just it wouldn't have been enough just to go to her about a past event and just say sorry sorry for for what I did you know sorry for these behaviors sorry that I was dishonest sorry that I wasn't you know all of these these things um and you know what like I prayed on it and she had um in August last year she had her second child and it was an emergency cesarean and you know she her hormones were crazy she was um she's got another little girl Darcy who um, you know, I was able to just step in and be like, hey, like I can let me be of let me be of help to you. Let me, you know, take take the children out. Let me, what can I do for you? Like, how can I help you? You know, and that's 
you know, that was a blessing. That was would it was much more helpful than me going to her and just saying, look, you didn't know that I lied to you, but you know, this is what I did. Like that wouldn't have been helpful, but I, you know, God showed me how I could be of maximum service. Um yeah, so I continue um when I finish the the, the workbook, you know, I as I agreed in in the the steps, you know, I would be of service to other women. So now I um I sponsor women. I, you know, constantly I try to put my my number in any kind of Zoom meetings that I'm at. And I've got a home group um that, you know, whenever uh, someone comes in, always, you know, giving out my number, always reaching out. Um, what does my recovery look like today? Um, you know, I get up in the morning and I I pray. I I stay the the, the step three and the step seven prayer. Um, you know, I'm able to pause during the day when I'm you know feeling resentful. I just I've tried to follow the directions in in the big book. Um, you know, I listen like Re K twelve is just you know it's full of amazing resources. Um, you know the meetings that they put on, um, the podcasts that they do. Um, whenever I I go to meetings, I always try to, you know, keep it solution based. Um, you know, talk about how, you know, what how I I live my life. Um, you know, the blessing for me today is being able to take um, take what I've learned and like roll that out with my family. Um, for instance, uh, my daughter. Um, She's 15 and she was having issues with school at school and another girl had had stolen her her pen from her. Now, before I would have either listened to her and just kind of batted it off, like it's trivial, or you know, just just kind of not really, I don't know, I would have just given my opinion on what she should have done. But now I was kind of like, oh, hold on, like you're feeling resentful, and I've got the workbook in front of me. So um, you know, I was able to take her through the columns, like, why are you resentful? What is the cause? What is it? To, what does it affect in you? Where are you at fault? And how can you, you know, set matters straight? Um, so we were kind of, you know, I had to kind of take it down to, to like a 15 year old's level. But by working through that, um, you know, like we were just kind of able to get to to like a better place without her having to, um, you know, she wanted to go in and then cause harm to this child. And, you know, we were able to talk about consequences of actions. And, you know, she came home from school the day after and and she didn't, you know, she didn't have to then make any amends for any behaviours that she'd done. And, you know, you could just kind of see the that change in her. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it's, it's such a blessing to, you know, this works for life. Now, like recovery is my whole life. Like there's not, not kind of like separate parts to it. It's like God is doing for me in, in everything. Um, you know, I was so fixated on, on being sober that I just, I missed the whole point of the program. Like it's just, it's my, and you know, the, the, the big book the and the workbook, it's like, I'm here for my, my thinking, not my drinking. And I can, you know, really, really see that now. Um, I think one of the the biggest blessings for me um, is my husband has just come back into recovery. So that caused me quite a lot of, um, you know, over the last, since sort of last year, um, you know, I've been wanting to do things like I wanted to, I wanted to help him. Um, and, you know, I'm so, so blessed that I, I, do you get to work with my sponsor? We have like usually every week we we get on a Zoom for an hour and we, you know, we can we read the big book or we, you know, we can talk about our life and bring it back to the big book. And we've studied other text. Um, and she's such a blessing, you know, in my life today. We can commence shoulder to shoulder. Um, but you know, she kept taking my thinking back to the big book, to the wives afterwards. And and also quite recently, we've got um Easter coming up in in England and you know it's like four bank holiday days um, and I had like started planning all of these things and this was just a few weeks ago prior to to my husband coming in back into the into recovery um, and I thought I was being 
helpful because I was like, right, we're going to do this thing this day, this thing this day, just to sort of keep him sober. Um, and, you know, again, I just, I, there was no faith for me. I was just trying to, to control everything. Um, and, you know, my sponsor shared with me, there's, I'm kind of blocking him from his, his step one. You know, he, I'm preventing him from, from admitting that he was powerless because I'm just there. You know, I had to, to really check my motives in, in what I was doing um, and how I was planning things out. Am I being responsible or am I controlling? Um, and after that, like after that conversation, I just was like, okay, like I need to just let go, like let go and let God, like what will be, will be. Um, and then of course, the next very, very next day, like God just came in and he went to his first meeting. So he's now, you know, two and a half weeks in. he's working with a sponsor. And, you know, this is the, the power, you know, I think that I can control things. I think that I'm all powerful and, you know, like I need to just get out of the way um, and let my higher power do his job um, because it's it's definitely a way better than, than anything that I can do. Um, and I just want to leave it here on a reading from page 53 where it talks about God is everything. So it's halfway down on page 53, it says, when we became alcoholics, crushed by a self-imposed crisis, we could not postpone or evade. We had to fearlessly face the proposition that either God is everything or else he is nothing. God either is or he isn't. What was our choice to be? You know, every day, like I just have to remember that passage in my head. Um, you know, is it Cheryl's will or God's will? Um, and yeah, just keep trying to to live live through God. Um, and yeah, I think I'll leave it there. If that's okay, Karen. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Sorry, you hear a kitty movie there in the background. I hope it's not too loud. Um, thank you so much for your beautiful share. I, for one, really identify with uh, trying to control the addict in my life. Um, and I'm just so inspired by what you said about your husband and his program. Yeah, I just I just want to share on that. Is that okay with you? Um, just really identify with that. I have a son who's a compulsive overeater and he's really overweight. And I took him to the sugar clinic and I got him on a diet and he's got his sugar down. And, and I even got him into like an exclusive research program um, where he got shots for under 18 year olds to lose weight. And guess what? He's in it for a year and he lost 10 kilo. And the program was over. And guess what? <laughs> he stopped getting his shots. And so his appetite is back. And he started gaining the weight. And I just like, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I laugh at myself. I was like, okay. That worked for a few months, kind of, sort of, not really. You know, why don't you let God help him now? Or, or, or let your addict hit his rock bottom. If anyone is on this line. And relates to what Cheryl shared about her husband or what I just said about my son and his overeating. Um, through this workbook, we actually handle Al-Anon is an addiction, a control addiction. And really all addicts are control addicts, right? Because we're not letting God run the show. So I, I refer you to our website to listen to the share that Nikki did about Al-Anon on our Afro-Euro podcast. Um, I had a question. Seems you found an amazing um, sponsor that guided you through the big book. And I loved what you said at the beginning that you got through this um, workbook fast. You, you quickly put yourself down, but I actually want to give you a, you know, a big hug and a high five. Um, I love what Cheryl said about getting through the workbook in 60 days. Even if she did fall, perhaps after that, it is important to go through this work swiftly. And I think that that's where other people drown and die and whatever get hugged to death and other fellowships and meetings can you talk about the positive side of that how did you how did you get through the workbook at a fast clip i don't want to, you know without focusing on your relapse yet we'll talk about that after but 
How did you get through the work and, and do a thorough job in 60 days? Talk to me about that. Barbara, yeah, sure. uh, if you WhatsApp me, I'll send the workbook or maybe we could upload the aura. Aura, can you upload the link here into the WhatsApp chat? I know you're tech savvy. Yeah, thanks, Karen. So, um, yeah, I downloaded the Big Book Workbook, which is what we're talking about. Um, and and yeah, you know, like everything is is condensed into that workbook. So, you know, my sponsor, she was just like, we had like a little call, like a, an identification call. And then it was just like, you know, she's, she wasn't there to be my friend. She wasn't there to, for me to just listen to like, tell her my whole life story and like, poor me, poor me. It was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to schedule a call at this time. Like you call me and then we go through the work and we like had that hour set aside. Um, and then as we were coming to, to the end of the call, it was like, okay, okay, like, you know, I wanted this, like, I really wanted this. It was like, okay, when can you meet next week? So after every, um, every hour that we had set aside each week and, you know, like it's different time zones, but you just, if you want this, you can just make this work. So, I mean, there was one time it was like six in the morning here. Like sometimes it's like 7 PM at night, but just, it was like one hour. Like I could definitely commit to that. Um, and we just, you know, we we read the book and then I just went away, um, did any of the work that I needed to do. Um, and then, yeah, like everything, this workbook is incredible because after like I went through the workbook, like now, as I said, we speak regularly, we can pick up pages in the big book, but it's condensed, like everything is there. It's like super simple. And also, Karen, as you touched upon, like the different um you know, the, the coda, the Al-Anon, you know, I, um, I didn't even like now before I came into to recovery, I just thought I can only work with other addicts and my, I'm only one fellowship, but this has just opened my eyes. It's opened my mind of actually all the different, um, you know, the, the different fellowships that I can actually identify with. And the last sponsee that I worked with, um, didn't have the same, um, uh, like she didn't use cocaine, but I was still able to take her through the workbook because, you know, it makes it quite clear. It says, um, you know, on page three, any acting out or obsessive compulsive addiction patterns such as drugs, sugar, food, nicotine, gambling, sex, love, fantasy, you know, it covers everything. So we can just take anyone through these steps. Yes, I am. Um... I want to echo that. I also, I do not have an issue with alcohol or narcotics. And I've worked with very successfully with AAs and, and, and NAs. I came in through OA, kind of uh, learned about love addiction and codependency and identify with that. I'm an ACA, but um, I work, you know, the workbook, it works. It's just, you know, you have a strap. You take the, uh, you know, you take the antibiotics, assuming you give antibiotics after seven days, it should, you know, within three days, you should see an improvement in seven days, you know, hopefully it's gone or you need a stronger antibiotic. Uh, you know, this is a recovery recipe, a recovery prescription. It works when you work it. Um, I want to say something about what you just said, Cheryl, which I really love. One, she's saying that her sponsor was there. She was loving, but she was, um, she was, uh, you know, firm, or maybe a better word is focus. She kept redirecting her to the workbook. You know, this is how we do sister. We crack open the workbook and we read it. You know, I had a newcomer who's been, you know, has a husband in rehab and has been reaching out to me saying, can we talk? I have an hour drive is like, um, maybe, maybe a little bit. So we want to talk when you can open up the workbook and get acquainted the way I help you. I said, I'm happy to hear a whole life story in this framework but otherwise i'm not qualified to hold all your trauma all your pain i'm not a therapist i'm not a psychiatrist that would be irresponsible and um and one i'm not interested in doing that but in big book language uh, it's not helpful it's not mm -hmm. helpful to her and it's not helpful to me the big book talks about this too we cannot carry the weight of the world on our shoulders you know i had a a sponsor was a, a, a sex and love addict who told me about every exploit she ever had with one man, with two men, with, I don't know, you know, 
throw some monkeys in there or something. No, just kidding. But like, I couldn't deal with that because, you know, uh, like Cheryl, I have 14 year old, a 16 year old, I have teenage girls, I have teenage boys, you know, when they were one hour late coming home, I started flipping out because I had taken the weight of the world on my shoulders. I can't handle my, all my sponsees check or cast, you know, similarly, I have a relative with bipolar disorder. She's angry at the government. She's angry at social services. She's angry at the religious people. She's angry at the non-religious people. She's angry at the left wing. She's angry at the right wing. And I said to her, that is, you know, I do not have that luxury as our workbook says, quoting our big book. We do not have the dubious luxury of getting angry like other people. We can't drive like other people. You know, in Israel, people drive like crazy. I can't flip people off while driving. I can't cut people off like driving because it will hurt me. And consequently, all of those around me, we work these principles in all my affairs, meaning if I'm late, but someone wants to cut in front of me, you know, I have to stop, pray. If I have the time, if I really don't, I may not. And, and you know, okay, because that's who we are in recovery. We're the person who at the intersection lets the other guy go in front of us, right? Yeah, you want to say something about that, Cheryl? Please hop in, jump in. Yeah. Um, absolutely. You know, the big book talks about us being like sensitive people and 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 people pleasing, you know, that really dishonest behavior. And thank, you know, thank God that because before, like I people would come to me and I'd be I, I've heard it in the rooms, like I'd be taken hostage by by sponsees, um, like just spewing their their problems. But I didn't have I couldn't say like let's take it to the big book because I didn't make the big book a working part of my mind and also I just wanted to help them I thought I was being helpful by oh let me like offer this solution let me help you with this and again like like I just I need to I'm uh as you kind of touched upon Karen like we need to direct them to the the properly appointed authorities because you know otherwise we we could be causing more harm than than good yeah and if we're active out there working with women i'm sure you've come across this cheryl you know i you know i live here in a religious community i work with a lot of religious women i work with non-jewish women too i work with but like i am not the person to tell a person whether to get divorced whether not to get divorced i'm not the person to tell them whether their husband is beating them or not beating them because remember we're talking to addicts first of all i don't know you from adam and even mm -hmm. if I do, I don't know how crazy you are behind closed doors. So I can hear your story. I can broker your relationship to your higher power and I can help you work with others. You know, I'm not saying, you know, if he's hitting you, that's good. No, it's objectively not good if he's hitting you. But I don't know the whole story. I don't know if you hit him. <laughs> I don't know if you, you know, kicked him where the sun don't shine. I don't know anything except how to take you through the workbook, get you to God and helping others. And this is real tricky. You know, those of us who are sponsoring, and I know some of my fellows in this line, like you, Cheryl, like others here, we're active. And and that people pleasing, like Cheryl said, ensnares us, it seduces us because we want to save the day. And we have to right away, we have to be in top spiritual condition. I want to qualify this. I'm not a therapist. I'm not the person to go through for this, but the 12 steps are great. The other thing is we want to work. You hear with Cheryl when she came back after she was all like doing this in 60 days she came back wanting the solution you know um we want to really work with people who want this with the desperation of a drowning man if people are driving you crazy if ladies are saying this and that if people are asking the same question 50 times if people are arguing back say, hey like this is what i do this is how i do it black on white we go through the steps we go to the big book and, um, and uh, God willing, we recover. We have some questions here in the chat. Maybe you'll um, address those. Let's go up. Um, Brian, yes, you share about acceptance and surrender, especially when I had a part um, with my behavior. Well, you know, according to the big book, we always have a part, just either we're willing to look at it or not. Um, can you see this question? Yes, yeah. Very hard for me. Okay. Why don't you read it and, and answer it as you will? Thank you. Um, <laughs> page 417 in the big book. How many times have I had to go to this page? And I'm just I'm just gonna read this paragraph out because this is my 
my kind of answer to to everything when things don't go exactly how I had planned. So, and acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that that person, place, thing or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and in my attitudes. You know, every, um, yeah, I can't say it any better than that. You know, when I try to run the show um, and I want things my way, like just it, nothing good is going to come of that. Like I just have to just, yeah, take it back to that give paragraph. Us, give us an example, Cheryl. Give us, a, if you don't mind getting a little personal mm-hmm. here, um, give us an example when um, you found something. Um, I also have a personal example to share, Brandy. Ask me to share as well, and I will. Give us an example of when um, you wanted to fix something, something was uh, displeasing to you, and then and then you realized you had to surrender to acceptance and get there on page 417. Yeah. Um, okay, so probably at the moment, like taking it back with, with my daughter, um, you know, she's 15, she's got her, her mock exams coming up, um, and we are two very different people. Like I am very... Like I like to be studious, I like to be organized and and da 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 da. And she's like the polar opposite. And you know, for the last couple of weeks, um, we've got the Easter holidays coming up, and I'm saying to her, like, oh, it's gonna be really fun. Like we can put together a revision timetable and we can do this and we can do that. And it's just like me like pushing, like pushing what I want for her, what I want best for her. Um, you know. Uh, and I just, you know, I was getting her a tutor, um, like making her do her homework, like just really like just pushing what, I, because I want her to pass her mock exams because I'm so worried about her future because, you know, it's all about me. Um, and, you know, and it's still like every day I'm kind of having to to take this back to to God. And I'm like, okay, I have no control over this. If she doesn't want to put the work in, okay, like that's on her. You know, um, yeah, so I just, I have to let her, I can, if she wants my help, like she knows that I'm here, but, you know, I, I just have to, to let that go. And and she's old enough now that she can make her own decisions and she under she understands the consequences. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something that I have to, to really hand over like a lot. I love that you brought this up because I'm going to actually throw in another part here, right? Because we have a few mommies on the line here, um, present company included, right? We have to accept, you know, my kid is not the studious type. My kid is not, um, you know, doesn't wake up on time. My kid uh, doesn't want to study in the same um, way that I would. And yet, as a parent, right, we are the properly appointed authority to teach boundaries to give discipline, to offer help, right? It is Cheryl's job, just like it is my job with my teens, um, to pay for their tutoring, offer them tutoring, uh, make them a time, set, set boundaries, you know? It's not always fun, but, you know, we, we don't just, like, let them hit rock bottom. Not at 15, you know, they're not capable adults yet, but, you know, to say, like, okay, you want to go out with your friends? Well, after you clean your room, you could do that. After you've made up with a tutor, you could do that. You know, I'm, I'm not going to speak for sure, but I know to my, my kids, I say, listen, if you're getting above 80, that's fine. I'm not going to demand straight A's. But if you're under 80 and you want to go out, you have to make sure um, to get some help. Um, get, you know, get some help, get some tutoring. Um, you want to stay out late at night? Um, maybe, but you have to wake up for school on time. I have a daughter who's chronically late. And I told her, like, I'm not going to let you go out at night if you can't handle the mornings, right? Because that I am the properly appointed authority to teach her how to function, yet I can't control her. And it's a really fine line. I also struggle with that. 
um, control and mothering, you know, just like I shared with like in the past, I've shared a lot of times I have a few overweight kids having my face in their plate, you know, why are you eating that? And why are you having cake? And we just had our, like our um, holiday here. That's much like Halloween where the house is now full of candy and cookies and cake. And, and it's like, you know, and I just have to shut up and do my job. You know, it is my properly appoint. I'm the properly appointed authority to buy vegetables, cut salad, make healthy soups, make sure there's lots of protein and vegetables. And I'm not the properly appointed authority to nag um, and be on their case. And I have to pray for help with that every day. Without him, it is too much. I need God to help with that. Because given to my own, left to my own devices, I am a big, fat nag control freak. But with God, I could do a little bit better and get a life. You know, and a lot of times it means, you know, if I know I nag, I have to just take my two legs and get out of here. You know, go to Pilates, go to the supermarket, just get out or offer a different activity. Um, Brindy asked about acceptance when I have a part in something. I had something yesterday. It's funny. Um, and I reached out to one of the fellows in our group um, that I'm really frustrated in my house. You know, here I am trying to live the spiritual life and uh, it's really frustrated. There's a lot of gossip around me. And I really hate it. And I think it's really tacky. And it's like, gosh, you don't have anything better than to like make fun of people or talk about people or imitate people. Like, um, and I do believe that. Um, and yet, you know, I had to still look at where am I at fault? Where am I to blame? I had some resentment against, you know, someone who was talking about other people. Um, you know, and I, and I just have to stop and pray. Or, you know, and talk to them about it. I talk to them about it. We got to improve the speech in the house. We got to, we got to think better. We're going to have a better quality of life. We're going to be healthier. And, you know, and I'm, I'm still in the middle of that one. I do have to pray on it. One of my daughters and I said, we're going to, we're going to learn a book about proper elevated speech, how to, you know, you know, study a proper, proper um, ancient Jewish text about proper noble speech. We're going to start doing that. So, um, you know, again, this isn't one size fits all, but yes, even in that, with that noble thing, I have to look at where am I at fault? Where am I to blame? And where can I take responsibility, right? Well, we always look at that and then we look for the next right action. We don't just leave it um, in the thought life, in the confessional life. There is an amend to make. What can I do in my house? And I told them I'm willing to have a contest if we learn the laws of proper speech. Um, in Judaism, I told them I'm willing to pay, you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. If someone wants to tell a story about proper speech um, at the dinner table, I will even pay for that. You know, to I, you know, if it matters to me, <clears throat> I got to make it happen. Just like if I want my eyebrows done, I got to reach the cosmetician and, and find one if she's not available. You know, when someone wants their eyebrows done, they'll call everyone until they get an appointment. So if I want proper speech, you know, I got to keep doing my part and stop controlling others. Um, Cheryl, I'm happy to hear if you want to share anything on that or, or take a different topic, um, about fear and acceptance and all that. Yeah, sure. So I think like for me a little bit, like, so as my daughter is older, like, you know, like my son is four, so there is like, I have to, obviously there's a lot of different parenting methods than with a 15 year old, but you know, at the moment I can lay like the same way when I work with a sponsee, like I can give them all the tools like this is the I can provide those things and just like I'm here but I can't do the work for you the same way I can't do the work for a sponsee like I can't want it more than them like I can explain the consequences I can provide like the education but you know ultimately if she she doesn't want it then then that's that is that's on her and you know that's really hard for me um as a mom and as like a codependent and you know in my active addiction you know she's kind of been like she's experienced that with me and there were a lot of times when I would you know kind of used her like make me feel better like you know a really unhealthy relationship and or you know times when you know I couldn't get her to school or things like that it's just so she's kind of now experiencing this this new um, relationship with me and it's hard. And, you know, I'm incredibly gr grateful to, to hear, um, I listened to that Alan on share um, you, you mentioned with Nikki, um, Nikki M and, 
you know, to hear her parent, it's like, I'm not here to be your best friend, you know, because that's kind of what I always wanted. Like, you know, like me, like, um, but it's like, no, like my job is to be your mum. So this is what this is like how it's going to be. Um, so it's it's amazing to kind of hear other people's experiences just to to help me with my own, um, you know, the same way that we hear about other people's recovery. Like, what do you do to get recovered? You know, it's it's how do you parent? How do you do this? Like, it's great for me to to hear from other other people. Thank you, you're muted, Karen. Oh, sorry, yeah, I was having, I don't know. <laughs> I was touching the screen, but it didn't help. Um, yeah, I love what you said there. And this reminds me of something that was said to me once. Um, not said to me, I heard it on a great, great meeting on an audio podcast. And this is really hard, like certainly as a parent, but those who are not parents, those of us who are working with addicts, related to addicts, sometimes we have to let the other person hit rock bottom. Like what, if it's a parent, sometimes you have to let your kid gain, you know, 10 kilo, God forbid. Sometimes you have to let them flunk the test. Sometimes you let them have to let them be late to school and get in trouble with the principal, the teacher. And we so badly want to prevent that, right? Because we're addicts. We're, we know what it looks, what rock bottom looks like. And we've seen, maybe we've seen it in our families, with our spouses, with our parents, if we're adult child. We so badly want to like, you know, it's like those bumper cars, you know, we so badly want to had the had the stadium so no one crashes into the wall because we've been there and we know what rock bottom looks like for us for our parents for our relatives for those we've lost and buried it isn't a joke and yet we have to let go we have to let go i'm saying this for myself i have to let go you know and that's a, a difficult proposition like I may have to watch my son who just went down three shirt sizes. God forbid. I may have to watch him struggle before he, he owns it himself. You know, I may, you know, my daughter that she was, you know, teenager arguing with friends. I may have to watch her argue with friends and make mistakes. And that's not easy with a sponsee who is a slaw and not willing to get into recovery. She may get an STD, she may get pregnant, she may get in trouble, she may get into deep depression. I can only help the person who really wants it. And I, I love what you're, you're saying about your husband. You really have to pray for them. And I really have to remember that I'm a beautiful child of God, that Cheryl is a daughter of God, that, that the feel good from my spouse doing what they should be doing or or my daughter, you know, and I'm all psyched because here I am, I'm in recovery. And my daughter did, you know, start dieting and going to the gym and all that. And I'm so proud of her. But it's like, I have to remember that I'm a precious child of God, no matter, you know, what my weight with makeup, without makeup, <laughs> hair removal, no hair removal. <laughs> and so yeah. is my daughter. And so is my daughter. And so is my son. And uh, like uh, like our fellow Nadia says, just have to send that care bear love from my heart to my children, to my fellows, to my friends, to those crazy people in my meetings, the addict who is still suffering. It's a lot of compassion and a lot of love and a lot of prayer. And um, I forget who said this. It's such a great quote. I don't I don't think it was some an old timer. He said as an Al Anon, maybe his name was Chris. He said um. If you let go, they might not recover and they might not stay alive, but they just might. And if you don't let go, they're not going to make it. And, and, and you, and they might also take you down in the process. I paraphrase something like that, but, um, you know, and that, and that I feel are working our step 12, working with others, you know, Cheryl's on the phone here now. She can't simultaneously be with all you beautiful people in Enrico 12 and, you know, um, up in her daughter's business. So to, you know, yours truly, I can't micromanage the world and be here on the Rico 12 podcast. 
Um, do we have any last, uh, maybe we have time for one more question. Do we have any more questions in the chat? Okay. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much. Would you like to pray us out? Thank you. Sure. So um, I've chosen the Thomas Merton prayer. So it's kind of on my like re recovery app thing. And I've always, um, yeah, I always find it really beautiful. So thank you for asking me to be of service, Karen. And thanks for everyone being on the meeting today. God bless you all. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I'm following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. Thank you. Wow. I, you need a WhatsApp. That's me. I have the chills. That is so special. Your will, not mine, be done. Um, if anyone is interested, we spoke a lot about parenting. Um, the second Wednesday of every month, we do the Mommy Podcast. It was Kirsty, Nadia, and I. Now it's going to be Kirsty. Cheryl, maybe you'll stand in for us, Nadia. She's got a great new job, thanks to the promises of this program. Um, we have a great Mommy Podcast where we talk about being a, a mommy. It's applicable to daddies, too. Maybe we'll throw a daddy in there for, for fun. Um, parenting and recovery is part of the big book. I'm going to wish you all a beautiful day to do his will, to want to do his will, honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. And may you spread your light, your own special light into the world. Thank you. I've seen stars fall from above Falling in and out of love I've been high and I've been low Now I know I just can't do this on my own I've seen a boy become a man He got lost without a plan so far away from home Now I know And I just can't do this on my own Your arms surrounding me Your touch is grounding me No longer searching for purpose alone Is now I know just can't do this on my own I'm looking for the words to say You make the world a better place I can call that place my home Cause now I know That I just can't do this on my own Your arms surrounding me Your touch is grounding me No longer searching for purpose all alone Cause now I know Stars fall from above I 
fell in and out of love I got high and I fell low But now I know That I just can't do this on my own No, I just can't do this on my own I just can't do this on my own 